Hi, welcome. Grab your mat, grab a block, a blanket, or a bath towel, and maybe a pillow. If you're a beginner, grab a block, maybe bring it under your sit bones, take a seat on it, tighter hips. So grateful for this practice. Um, it's allowed me to loosen up my hips and to loosen up my low back, hamstrings, and have a lot more mobility. We're gonna get started. Starting in Baddha Konasana today, so taking your soles of your feet together, start to lean forward. You want to be on your sit bones, you want to have your feet a little closer to your body today. Maybe lean forward, if leaning forward is not possible for you today, maybe just having your hands behind you. But wherever you go, start to breathe intentionally. Start to soften in your shoulders. Start to soften in your jaw. Let's begin by taking a really big giant breath in through your nose. A big full ha through your mouth. Just using our breath intentionally today. Breath as a way to soften a way to detoxify the body, as a way to bring energy into the body. Maybe grabbing a block, putting it on your feet, resting your forehead on your block if your forehead didn't come all the way to your feet. Or if you're like me when I first started, your forehead's nowhere close to your feet and that's okay too. Setting a personal intention while you're here. Power of intention in our daily practice. What you're about, what you want to be about. It's an opportunity really, to me, to reset, refocus, revitalize. Put your breath Somewhere on about a four second inhalation. Noticing a pause as you breathe in at the top. And about a four second or longer exhalation. Noticing the pause on the empty. Fully breathing in. Pausing and fully breathing out and noticing. It's going to be about doing three minute holds, more or less, most of these poses a day. A couple more rounds of breath. Starting to come up slowly. Starting to make your way onto your hands and your knees. We're going to move into a few cat cows. Some really good nutrition for the spine. Spread your fingers out. Take a breath in. Look up. Breath out and round. Pressing into the ground. Inhale. Pulling your hands back. And exhale. Squeezing the belly. Drawing your shoulders up to your ears. Back and forth in, squeezing, breathing out. I'm moving into some big, giant hip circles. So moving your hips to the right, to the left, back to your heels, moving forward, just some giant rotational circles. Move it the other way, changing directions. And moving into a child's pose, so taking your big toes to touch, take your knees a little bit wider than your chest. You can bring your pillow underneath your chest here if you got really tight hips, if your hips are up in the air, a block under your forehead, a blanket right under your knees. So like if you were to 
place your blanket right at the bend of your knees right behind them. That'll also help support it. Or you can put an extra blanket underneath your knees. Sit back, reach your arms out, and we're gonna turn our hands into, or our arms into external rotation. So that means turn your pinky fingers in toward one another, your palms up toward the sky, toward the heavens. Really helping elongate the lats. So the lats go all the way from the tops of the pelvis all the way up to the arm bone. Actually attached all the way from the pelvis all the way up to the humerus, which is the top of the arm. So helping that elongate can help with your mobility, your shoulders, your back. Today really coming from a mindset of a beginner. No matter your age or how long you've been practicing or how little you've been practicing, just putting in the mindset of a beginner wherever you are. No need to worry about what's going to happen after this or what happened before this. Really putting your attention on your breath. Focus of breathing in and out that four second, four part breath. One more deep breath in. One more giant hug. Fully letting go. I'm gonna start to transition into the next pose, which is gonna be a down dog. It's gonna be a way to strengthen and open. So putting in a really kind of a non-traditional yin pose, but one pose that I find so helpful, so strengthening, so settling. So stretching out your arms, spreading out your fingers, just taking your feet back, pressing your heels toward your mat. Maybe put a little bend in your knees, or if you like, you can straighten your legs. Thinking about rotating the creases of your elbows toward the front of your mat. Taking some deep, full breaths, allowing your body to physically awaken and maybe physically strengthen. Down dog is one of those tougher poses for you, no big deal, just keep on practicing.
Big breath in. Jaita. We're gonna start to make our way into um, hero's pose. So you can drop your knees. If you need a blanket under your knees, by all means, get a blanket. Something to help your knees. And if you've got tighter hips, you can put a blanket or the towel right behind your knees. And also you can make a seat. So you can take a couple of blocks of pillows, put it between your knees. You wanna take your big toes to touch here and your knees a little bit wider than your chest. So big toes touching. Taking your knees a little bit wider. And sitting back today. If you've got really open quads, the fronts of your legs, you can start to lean back. If you need to build a little landing pad, put a couple of blocks behind you or a pillow behind you. Or just sitting up nice and tall is okay too. If you notice if you lean back and your knees start to come off the floor, just come up a little bit. This practice is not about going hard. It's about trying easy. It's about softening. Letting go of the struggle or the attempt to get someplace. Big, giant breath in. Big, full. Uh, and starting to make your way up. Gonna make your way into a down dog. Bend a leg, bend a knee, straighten a leg. A little bit of movement if you need to in your down dog. Going to be going into lizard. So if you need blocks, grab your blocks, put them at the front of your mat. Bring your thumbs to touch. Step your right foot outside of your right hand. Moving into a lizard pose. Walk in your right foot out to the side edge of your mat. You just want to make sure that your right foot's ahead of your knee. It's not behind your knee. It's not kinking your knee. From here, you can stay up on your hands. You can come onto your forearms. You can put a block under your forearms. Find your way. Back knees down. Right knee's just opening out. Uh, 
and you're just moving right back into your breath practice. And you can stay right where you're at in this lizard, or you can get a little twisty with it and grab your tail or grab your back foot with your right hand, or just simply twist. Just moving your chest a little away from your thigh, a little bit of lean back, a little bit of opening. If you've got your foot, you're just opening into the rectus femoris, the front of the quad back leg or also a, a, a nice hip flex or so as TFL stretch. As we move, we're turning right back into the practice of refocusing, rebreathing. For me, this practice today, I had a really difficult time staying still. So that's okay. Knowing that wanting to move is normal and some days are different than others. Okay, we're gonna move into a half pigeon. So walking your right foot across your mat and taking your pillow, put it under your right glute, your block or your pillow underneath your left the front of your left thigh for a little support if you're newer you can even make your way onto your back on this one you can put a block under your forehead so if you're going onto your back if this is all too much for you on your stomach lay on your back take your left foot to the floor on your back and you'll cross your right foot over your left thigh and take your hands between your legs it's a modified half pigeon if not Find your way here, breathe. Maybe spinning your palms to face up, elongating the lats. Take a giant inhale, fill up your belly. Open your mouth, let out a ha. Ah. 
making your way up. We're going to do a little core work. So come onto your forearms. You can keep your back knees down or lift your knees. Forearm plank. So importance of core. Squeeze your belly. Press your hands down. And you can spread your hands out, palms down if you like. Whichever one feels more comfortable, more engaging for you today. Move in breath. So not everything's comfortable. Right? These yin poses, for me, it's, it's a really work in versus a work out. Working in some good things, good thoughts, good openings, good stillness. Knowing that you can drop your knees if you need a little break, then coming right back up. Another couple of breaths. Squeeze everything. Fire up your whole body. And then drop your knees. Come up on your hands and knees. A couple of cat cows. Just a little spinal movement. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, look up. Exhale, squeeze. Shoulders to your ears. Breath in. Breath out. Okay, we're gonna move into a lizard on the left side. So you're gonna step your left foot outside of your left hand, drop your back knee. The left big toe points at about 10 o'clock-ish, and you're rolling on sort of the side edge of your left foot today. Sometimes you can keep the toes pointed straight ahead and the leg pointed in, or the leg closer to your chest, or the side body today, we're just gonna let it fall out and open. Also, if you want to use a mantra, like the breath in, saying to yourself out loud or silently, I am. And then on your exhalation, you can use love, light, healthy, something you want to put in and put out. Okay, so you can stay exactly where you are in this lizard. Or if you like, you can come up onto your hands, if you're on your elbows, taking your left hand to your right foot. Just a little hip flexor work here, the front of the right leg. Maybe putting a little bitty bend in the right elbow, little bitty bend in the left elbow. Just opening up. 
A little more active stretch, but so effective for releasing hip flexors, putting a little twist in the spine. Breathing. Uh, okay, so you're just going to move into a half pigeon. So walking your left foot across your mat. You can support yourself any way you need to. So you can put a blanket, a block underneath your left hip if it's so intense that it doesn't feel good at all. Or a block or a blanket underneath your right thigh. Or you can even lay on your back. Modified half pigeon. Back into your mantra. Back into the mind set of a beginner. can spin your palms to face up here if you like or wiggle your elbows toward one another put your hands in a prayer like position start to bring your thumbs toward your spine toward the back of your neck okay come on up Lay flat on your belly and let go. Let your spine elongate. Bend your knees and then just sway your feet side to side. A little low back sacral lumbar spine movement. Okay, we're going to come into a sphinx pose. So you're going to come up onto your forearms. You want your elbows kind of directly underneath your shoulders. If you need, you can take your arms a little wider if you're a little tight in your low back. This is a front body opener, so hips there on the floor. Shouldn't feel this at all in your low back. And if you like, you can put a block or blocks underneath your elbows get you a little higher this is not quite enough if you're really a little more flexible you're getting some are building some good spine health nice flexibility in our spine hydration of the spine breath work
One giant breath in. One big full breath out. Uh, an opportunity to let go. And you're just starting to come up, starting to make your way onto your hands and knees. I see some people I know on the lake. They're honking, they're waving. Okay, so we're going into frog. So you're gonna make your way up on your hands and knees. You're gonna take your knees out more or less than 90 degrees from your hips. This is kind of a more advanced variation. It took me years of practice to get to where I am now. Uh, so if you need to, you can do this on your back. So you can land up on the floor, put your feet on a wall, or if you don't have a wall, you can just lay on your back, put your hands between your thighs. But if you'll look, my hips are more or less 90 degrees away from my knees, and then my ankles are more or less 90 degrees from my knees. And then my feet are turned out about 90 degrees. So if you want to support yourself, you can put a block underneath your chest, a block underneath your head. It's uh, my son and his girlfriends. <laughs> They're uh, out riding around on the boat, having a great day. And I'm having a great day. Just opening up, restoring. Okay, so in Frog, Can you come into your breath? Pretty intense pose. Great for opening the adductors, the inner thighs. Creating some mobility in your body. Versus what I hear so often is I'm just not flexible. Now we're not flexible a lot of times because we don't work on it. And what I've noticed is the more flexible I have become in my body, the more flexible I have become in my own mind. I don't know if that's true for you, but it's definitely been my journey. Last couple rounds of deep, full breath. slowly you're just gonna start to make your way out back up and we're gonna go into a wide leg seated fold so it's a great place to put a block underneath your sit bones if you're a little tighter be um, aware that you can sit on a block build any kind of seat you need I like to turn sideways on my mat, uh, take my feet wide. You can put a block or towels underneath your knees if you've got really tighter hamstrings. You can have your hands behind you and sit up nice and tall. But you want to be on your sit bones, the, uh, the bones at the bottom of our pelvis, tops of our legs. Start to lean forward, start to move back into your practice of breathing. 
I've got a block underneath my elbows. My elbows are the floor. When I first started on this pose today, it's a little, I'm a little tighter. So the floor, my mat's a little further away. Our blocks, our blankets, our tools, our props are really just meant to help us. So sometimes in life, learning to accept help, others. Another couple of deep rounds of breath. And it's starting to come up. Bring the soles of your feet together. Take a little wide opening in the Bhattakanasana that we started with. Then you're going to make your way onto your knees. We're going to move into what's called prayer pose or fire toes. So good for the feet. And uh, definitely when I first started this one, I so did not like this one. So you're just going to curl your toes under. Set your hips back towards your heels, your knees a little bit wider than your chest if you need it. I don't show you here, but if you need to lean forward, lean forward, put your hands on the blocks or, floor, or the floor, just taking a little weight off, but keep your toes bent and uh, stay with this practice. Check out your pinky toes, make sure they're curled under too. This is one of those practices that will change the way that you connect to the ground as you walk when you start to get your feet more open. Short story, um, back in 2013, I was at a yoga training and was getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and there were some ladies that lived below us and they were like who in the world is getting up in the middle of the night clunking on the ceiling and one of the guys i was rooming with was like pointed at me and said it's him and this guy the guy who was pointing at me was from africa and i mean he was so flexible and you know had walked around the earth barefoot for most of his life and he was still pretty young anyway i was like what does that even mean? He's like, well, your feet are so stiff. And I was like, my feet are stiff? I had no idea. 
So, um, I was just telling my wife just the other day how much my feet have changed, like the way I can contact the earth. And thinking about it, like when we have feet that are so stiff, rigid, kind of like walking on two by fours, what that does to our body, our ankles, our knees, our hips, our low back. It's like when we put our feet in these shoes, we're losing our mobility. These um, Nike shoes, well, I shouldn't say Nike, but Nike, Adidas, any of, the, any of the running shoes. Losing the mobility of the 26 bones of the feet, the 100 muscles, ligaments, and tendons of the feet. Our feet are so important. So you're doing some good things here. Keep breathing. A few more rounds of breath. Just using your breath to release stress, tension. Okay, starting to make your way off of this, making your way onto your back. Bringing your knees up into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze as you lay back. going to go into a, uh, a supine twist. Take your knees over to the left. Look over your right shoulder. If you need a block underneath your left thigh, do that. But try to keep your right shoulder on the floor. Look over your right shoulder. Twist yourself. And change, take your knees over to the right side. Look over your left shoulder, keeping your left shoulder on the floor, right thigh against the floor, or your right thigh on a block, whatever you need. Okay, just a little low back work. Just 
Come back up, bring your knees up into your chest, grab your shin bones. Make a few shin bone circles. Iron out your low back. Any low back work you need, any place you need to pause. Big circles the other way. It's a great stretch to start out every day right here. When you get in your bed, just opening up, lengthening the lats at the low back. Taking a little happy baby, grab the baby side edges of your feet. And here I invite you to lay back, take a Shavasana, or come up and take a seated meditation. May God bless and keep you. Have a great day. Namaste.